Don't judge me. <laughs> mm-hmm. A couple years back when our daughter was um, still pretty young, she was out in the backyard and she had this branch of uh, manzanita. And she raised it to the sky and she said, come on, lightning, show us your stuff. And um, I thought, oh, just, you know, kids playing. And, uh, and then I heard the thunder crack and I saw the sky lit up blue and uh, I kind of filed that away. First we got her in the house, obviously, but I uh, just kind of filed away that, 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 that memory <laughs> that I couldn't really ex- explain, um, but I liked the ring of it. So come on, Lightning, show us your stuff. You know, when I'm starting out to write, it's always sort of like that, you know? Kind of, it's an invocation or a provocation. You're hoping that, that inspiration will strike and reveal something that you haven't quite taken notice of before. You know, in the back of my head, I knew that I, I really wanted to work with Jay Belrose, um, who's a fantastic drummer. He and I had worked together on Little Moon some years ago, and um, he and his wife, uh, Jennifer Condos, we, we had toured together as well. And uh, they're such a great team, you know? And they, uh, they compliment my song so much that um, as I wrote, I kind of imagined that rhythm section in the back of my head. And, um, and then, you know, the other great discovery was that um, Eric Haywood was available. And uh, he's such a great player. I knew him from his, his uh, work with um, Sunvolt and other bands, but um, he played pedal steel on the album. And we basically just kind of went about it like that. I've come around to the notion that it's probably best that I produce my own records. You know, um, there's a lot of us who've been doing this for a long, long time that (laughs) have come to that realization, I suppose. Um, When a song comes to me, you know, when I get that idea for a sound, um, it's as though I'm hearing the whole thing fully realized. And then I have to sort of back engineer it and figure out how to pull it off. But um, given that, that uh, I as a writer have that roadmap and have a strong sense of where it should go, uh, I can get very tangled up when I'm, I'm trying to um, relate all of that to someone else who's um, coming in as an outside producer. The album was recorded and mixed by a guy named Pete Men, and uh, Pete is a, he's just, just an incredible talent out in LA, and uh, he's got a studio out there called Lucy's Meat Market. And um, I guess the, the building was a meat market at one time. And uh, uh, he just was, he was great in that he, he allowed me to kind of run around, jump on the piano, then plug in a guitar, and um, you never had to wait, you know, he was right there. Quick on the draw as we like it in the studio, especially when you're making a record in such a short time. We would go in and within, within three days, you know, you've basically, you have the makings of a record. Daniel Levin played some great horns on this record and uh, he came in for an afternoon uh, and overdubbed those horns. Um, Interesting stuff, trombonium, euphonium, horns that I didn't even know existed, but um, (laughs) they really complemented the songs, you know. Uh, They have a real human feel about them, unusual horns that are, are not so overused. I think one of the things that I'm the happiest about with this album is that didn't allow myself to uh, reduce the mystery of these songs. I, um, I try to stay out of their way. There tends to be several layers to a song, you know, there's, there's the surface layer that, that tells you where you're at and what you're seeing and what it feels like. But all the metaphoric layers, that, that kind of stuff reveals itself over time. And um, I don't know, I want to be the last one to <laughs> to take on that role of trying to uh, dilute it or demystify it. Lightning, show us your stuff. <laughs> <laughs>